this keyboard hasn't got proper MIDI. But that hasn't stopped me from being able to use it with my completely hardware studio. Check this out. That's coming from the Casio, I'm triggering it. And I'm gonna show you how it's done. So today guys is gonna be a music tech video. Um, thanks for all your support on the last video that I did. You know, I wanna do more of these videos because it's an another kind of area that I've got lots of information to share with you about. And yeah, I love making music. So that's one of my other things. And it's funny to see actually in the comments section, all the other people that follow this channel that are into the other stuff that I do, like e-bikes and all of that also interested in, in music technology as well. So I don't know if it's like an age thing. Anyway, but basically this is my doorless setup. So this is a setup that doesn't have a computer. I mean, apart from that one, which is just a laptop that runs some virtual instruments if I, if I need to. Um, so I use the laptop and stuff like that to make my music. A lot of the music from my vlogs is made on a laptop because it's very quick and easy to get stuff down. But if you wanna play live or if you wanna do anything you know, a little bit more hands-on, then doorless setups are the way to go because what you're using is you're using all the keyboard's own sounds and drum modules, you know, all, all this stuff, lovely gear behind me that you can see here, all makes its own sound. And, you know, this, this keyboard doesn't make its own sound. It needs the computer to do it. So it's just effectively like a controller keyboard. Now that's what this video is gonna be about because the latest trend of new keyboards don't have one of the key things that you need to run in doorless mode, and that is MIDI. So MIDI is Musical Instruments Digital Interface, and that allows you to connect lots of equipment together. Um, and it's an old fashioned standard, but basically it's like little DIN cable leads, five pin DIN leads, and they interconnect all of the equipment. So what you see here is this keyboard's connected to, you know, the drum machine, then it's connected to the, the keyboard, and it's all, you know, this is not audio, this is for triggering, actually triggering sound. So it allows all the stuff to talk to each other, basically, um, and you can basically create music that way. So, you know, if you start a, start a machine here, then you're getting some sounds coming from that keyboard, some sounds coming from, you know, the, the keyboard behind me, and bass line coming from this funky green System 1 keyboard there. It's all linked up. Now, this keyboard here, it's something that I've acquired quite recently, and this is called the Casio CTX 5000. Fantastic keyboard, amazing. I mean, what I was actually trying to do originally was trying to find a sound module that I could integrate into this system that had like real piano sounds, real string sounds, you know, lots of like kind of standard, you know, off the shelf sounds that you can use that were of a decent quality. And what originally what I was gonna do is just buy like a sound module, like an old second hand one off of, off of eBay or something like that. But then I came across these keyboards. These are like a Ranger keyboard. So this is like something that I had when I was young with speakers, you know, you, you commonly just see this in like your average family house, you know, just sat there, you know, and you can just play stuff at Christmas and, <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. But this keyboard is insane. It's got such a good array of sounds. It's got something like 800 sounds on board. Um, and it's got this AIX, and if you can see that, the AIX sound source. And that really does give you some fantastic sounds. I mean, these are the, this is just string sounds and, you know, those piano sounds. I mean, this beat as well. I mean, fantastic little starting beat for something. You know, that is, and that's built in. So you can build up entire songs on this keyboard if you want. You know, it could be used for all sorts of stuff. You could sample it as well, which is what I want to be doing. And I'll be covering that in some other videos. But there's one drawback with this keyboard. It hasn't got real MIDI ports on the back of it. Now I knew this when I got it. Actually, it has got MIDI, but it just hasn't got the same sort of MIDI as, as um, the other devices, like the old school MIDI with, with um, the two connectors on. So this has got USB MIDI. So a lot of these keyboards you see now are coming out and they haven't got real MIDI ports. They've just got this USB implementation. I don't really know why they do it. You know, it didn't connectors don't really cost that much to, to put on the on the board. Maybe it would make the keyboards and stuff a little bit bigger, but there's plenty of space on the back of that, so there's no excuse for that. But I think it's just this kind of move towards, you know, people aren't wanting to, or haven't up to these, these sort of recent few years, wanted to use like lots of gears strung together. So this is like a, you know, the, the trend now. So, you know, you, you would normally just plug that into a computer by USB, job done. But, in this case, I don't want to do that. I actually want to integrate this into the system. So to do that, 
it's possible and I've been looking into how to do this there are a number of boxes which you can put in between this keyboard which kind of means spending more money so you just bought this keyboard and you can't connect it and now you've got to buy another box to you know it's not ideal um, but that would give you the solution to you know connecting it up to the other gear why do you want to connect it up to the other gear well for me I mean I don't really necessarily need to because I can use this keyboard just as a instrument on its own I just play live like if you've seen the other video where I've, I was just playing live over the top you don't need that to be connected to anything because you're just playing it like a like you would if you just walked up with an acoustic guitar you're just playing it um, but in some cases I'm thinking well I just want the flexibility of being able to control this keyboard you know from the other keyboard and um, you know record some stuff that I might want to loop over in a in a little section of a song so what I've been looking into is stuff like this so this is a USB MIDI cable now this actually won't work connected to that on its own it needs something in between ie a computer so you're back to that again you know you're trying to use a computer to to solve a problem but what I've been thinking is could you use something like a Raspberry Pi or Arduino or something like that to just bridge that gap USB to MIDI just solve that problem and handle that and it turns out you can. I've been looking online, there's a couple of places which I've found some really useful information which I'll copy below as well. Um, so, Raspberry Pi, this is a Raspberry Pi, it's actually in, it looks more like a, a, one of those picture frames, but this is a Raspberry Pi 3 in a case with a touchscreen on the front. So, it makes it super easy to, um, you know, do anything with a Raspberry Pi. So, I use this for like, if I just want to grab something quick, because normally with a Raspberry Pi, you've got to connect it to a TV and stuff like that. This has got a load of USB ports on it, which means that keyboard will plug straight into here. So I know this is kind of a computer, but the idea is just to see if this will work, and then maybe we can sort of, you know, scale it down to more of a pure hardware solution. I don't know. And we've also got the USB MIDI cable. So the idea is we plug that into there, and we also plug the keyboard into there. We do some jiggery pokery in the um, in the Linux command terminal, and we try and route the keyboard information or the stuff coming from the rest of the studio to something that the keyboard can understand and that is what we're going to do. So first up we're going to power up the Raspberry Pi. There's my pre-plugged in power supply. So we're going to power up the Raspberry Pi if I can find this hole in it and that should just boot up. I'll stick it there if it will stay. And then we're going to take this thing which is basically two plugs these are the MIDI in and out so you have an in and an out with MIDI and then USB lead that goes in the other end so that's going to go into the Raspberry Pi let's put that over there and that gives you your in and out so now the Raspberry Pi has got MIDI the thing with Raspberry Pi is it's all built in so you know if you when you download the Raspberry Pi software it has MIDI enabled and everything else. So like some of these other embedded computers don't have that. So that's the good thing about Raspberry Pi, they've sorted everything, everything works. So you know that, you know, once you stick that SD card in and you boot it up, it'll work. So that's that. Now we need a USB lead to connect this keyboard into there, which I haven't got a spare one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna nick the one out of there. This complete control is plugged into. Um, yeah, these things are a bit annoying as well because you don't tend to have many of these knocking around anymore. These, um, what are they called? B, no, no, no. That's a USB A, I think that might be a B. I don't know. Anyway, so this goes into the back of your funky keyboard and plugs into the back of there. And then that's a USB port, USB lead as well, which just goes into the into the Raspberry Pi. Right. So the next thing we've got to do is take our MIDI in and put it in the MIDI out of this keyboard. Now the reason I'm putting it into the MIDI out of this keyboard is because basically MIDI comes out of here, goes into that. This has got a through, so it goes out of that keyboard and into this one here and that will trigger that one. And then this also passes it out as well. So it's like a, a big daisy chain loop. So each one of these bits of kit is actually connected in a loop. So this is connected to that, which is connected to that, which is gonna be connected to this keyboard. And everything's got its own 
MIDI channel, so it will only listen to what's happening on a particular channel. So you can have, you know, bass on this keyboard, drums on that keyboard, piano on this, and then this keyboard can do all the other stuff because, you know, it's the master. So this one's the master in the whole, in the whole chain. So what we've got to do now is we've got to tell this Raspberry Pi to basically just pass through whatever is coming in on these wires out to this USB and out to this keyboard, which sounds really complicated, but it's not. So I'm booted up into the command line on the Raspberry Pi, so, you know, it's very straightforward. It's not like a computer with a mouse. It's just, you know, right into the command line of the computer as it boots up. So there's a command called A connect, A connect, and if you do the L um, tag, then basically what it shows you is it shows you all your MIDI devices. So we can see the top one, um, which is timer announced. That's not really relevant. There's a MIDI through, and then here's the important ones. There's USB MIDI, which is our USB MIDI lead. And then there is Casio USB MIDI, which is pretty obvious which one that is. So what we need to do is we can tell this to actually connect these two different um, parts. So we can connect the Casio to the USB through. Or actually, the best way to do it, I think, is connect the MIDI through, um, or the USB MIDI, to the Casio. So the way you do that is you type in A connect, and you can actually see these clients are numbered. So USB MIDI is number 20 colon zero. So you just do 20 colon zero, and then you want to connect it to 24, client 24, which is the Casio, 24 colon zero. So we're connecting 20, device 20 colon zero to device 24 colon zero, and then enter. The magic might have happened. Let's see. So now, if we play something on this keyboard, we should get the message going all the way around to, into this keyboard, and you should get a sound. And we need to work out where that sound's coming from. So we'll have a look on the mixer. So my mixer has got the system one coming out as well because it's triggering. I haven't sorted the MIDI channels out, so you will get this thing. So I've muted the system one now, and that is this keyboard, so it's working. So what you, what you can do to just prove that it is this keyboard, because um, you can't see the mixer up there, is if I turn the volume down on this keyboard, you can see that it's actually been triggered by this one there. So that, guys, is how you connect a USB MIDI keyboard with no real MIDI ports on it to a studio that actually runs purely on MIDI, which is quite interesting. Now, presumably, what you'd be able to do, because that's like a weird trumpet sound, is you would be able to just go through the presets. Uh, we've got another keyboard coming out as well. Right, you'd be able to go through the presets on here. Cheesy presets. The reason I think that is, is because it's actually triggering general MIDI sounds which are pretty pants so yeah <laughs> the gunshot so I mean you can tell that it's general MIDI because if you go up to um, there's 256 sounds in general MIDI and general MIDI is basically for you know a standard MIDI set so piano is in a certain place bass is in a certain place drums are in a certain place so whatever MIDI file that you play you can you know download or buy MIDI files online and you know they'll have all your favorite popular songs for backing tracks and stuff like that. Whatever keyboard you play it on, it'll always play the same. It might sound better because the sounds are a bit better, but effectively, that's what general MIDI is. And in position 256, oh, no, this one is your really cheesy, um, cheesy gunshot sound. So the next problem I've got is working out how to actually trigger the internal sounds rather than um, the general MIDI sounds, because I don't want to use the general MIDI sounds because they're rubbish. To give you an idea, I mean, this is the sound that, you know, a decent sound that this keyboard will, will produce. Um, and if you kind of go to like a, a piano, fantastic sounds. Like these are, these are really good sounds, guys. And there's about 10 or so pianos on here. good sounds. So what I really want to do is access them and I think the only way I'm going to be able to do that is to send um, a thing called a control change message or bank change message to this keyboard to select that and I'm going to have to look at 
um, the keyboard specs and see how you do that. Every keyboard that you buy these days and sound module will have a chart, a MIDI implementation chart. Now, that can look a bit scary and look a bit confusing, um, but essentially what it is, it just tells you what the keyboard can do MIDI-wise. And funnily enough, I've been looking at the, the stuff for this keyboard and it will handle um, you know, MIDI changes. You can control this keyboard by MIDI, but it hasn't got MIDI sync. Now, I really don't know why, because everything has got MIDI sync. Even my keyboard that I had when I was like 13 years old had MIDI sync and it had real MIDI ports on it, but that's another thing. But it had MIDI sync, so you could, the reason you want MIDI sync is because things like this pattern, if you want that to start with the rest of the music, we've gone on to another pattern, but if you want that to start when you push start on any of the other things, you know, then you need MIDI sync. So you can't actually sync. And this has got a great sequencer built in as well, which is really powerful. It's got 16 part sequence on it. And because it hasn't got MIDI sync, you can't actually use that because it can't send the information out. You've solved that problem there. But I don't know, I think these, these guys need to A, stick MIDI back on the back of the keyboards, proper MIDI, because it's not gonna take, it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna really cost them any more to do that. And um, yeah, just just not cut down the MIDI functionality that's been the standard for so long. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, so that's how you solve that problem. Now I know that works, maybe we could look at like a, a piece of hardware that does this without having to boot up a Raspberry Pi every time. And you could automate these steps if you wanted, you know, to just use the Raspberry Pi anyway. But that's a cheap solution for doing it. The, the Raspberry Pi is like 30 pounds or something. And this lead is, you know, like a five or something on Amazon and that's it. You've got the problem solved. Right, enough talking anyway, let's get jamming.
right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll perform that properly in another video, I promise. And um, yeah, catch you in the next video.